Welcome back, my wizards. It's Lendon for Visionary Fire, back with another luscious tutorial. Whoa, behind you, look, there's a ghost, I think. What are you talking about, bro? Are you tripping? Ghost? No, seriously. Behind Oh, there he is, look! He's oh, right I'm there. so scared. Behind, behind me. Seriously, ah. look! the ghost effect we're going to be creating coming up. So the part about this ghost effect that's so amazing and makes you want to run around your house naked is that it's actually pretty easy and it's a real 3D simulation, not this amateur trap code particular stock footage bullcrap. So if this is your kind of jam, don't lose access to this channel and let's make magic happen. So obviously this is 3D animation. This is not a video of me. My hips are not this sexy. You're freaking out right now. You're thinking we're doing 3D character animation, but have no fear. I'm gonna show you a tool that's gonna blow your mind. It's gonna save you so much time. You're not gonna know what to do with all your time. Maybe you'll organize your cluttered desktop. I mean, that's saying a lot. How difficult it was to put your damn room together. Go to Mixamo.com to check this out. Look at here. So we have all these preset animations. So you don't have to do any character animation. Okay, so check this out. You can, first of all, you can go to the characters here and you can choose from all these different characters. But in the project file, I have where you can download this character and also I have some PBR texture materials with the normal map for the bump and everything. And check it out here. I'm building the project files for you guys. Here we have the different monster textures. I have some different skulls. We have the smoke simulation and the monster here. So I might even add some more stuff by the time I'm done recording. Enjoy. So you can choose all these different characters. So, you know, this you can do any animation you want to. We have this. No, I mean, I think this is pretty fitting, right? This is like the devil when you know, he's rejoicing because he convinced another human of evolution. Okay, then we have this one. Okay, wait, what is... Is this what I think it is? Yeah, it looks like Satan's having a lot of rejoicing. A little too much pleasure there. Okay, this is going too far. Get your head out of the toilet. So the animation I wanna use is this zombie scream right here. They have these little parameters where you can change the animation. Like you can change the character arm space so it spreads out the arms more. And then we have the overdrive. We can change the speed of it and stuff. So this is pretty cool parameters. It's like really amazing how they do all this. Maybe add a little, a little more frames at the beginning here. Another important thing to mention is you can upload your own 3D model to Mixamo. Just make it an FBX file and easily apply all these character animations. So this is our animation. It's just that simple. Um, and so what you have to do now is just click download. So it's going to export as an FBX format. Let's hit download. So now let's jump in our 3D application. I'm using Cinema 4D, but most of these techniques will translate to Blender or Maya or Houdini, whatever you want to use. I'm sorry, there's probably some 3ds Max guy who's like dislike this video. So what we can do in Cinema 4D is just hit File, Merge Project, like that, and then choose our zombie here, blah, 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 okay. And look at that, this guy is already rigged and we have an animation. Now I'm gonna say something that you're not gonna believe. So if you have an Adobe subscription, you also have Cinema 4D at the same time. What the heck? You guys didn't know you already had Cinema 4D. Just go over here to File, New, Max on Cinema 4D File. You have Cinema 4D already if you have After Effects. But it's the light version of Cinema 4D. There's, there's limited features, but this should be enough to just render out the ghost and have it ready for the simulation. You can also import the Cinema 4D file directly into After Effects and work with the 3D file without even opening Cinema 4D through the Cineware effect for After Effects. You can use lights, cameras, and everything without even having to open Cinema 4D. Now, something super useful, you guys are definitely gonna use this if you use Mixamo, you wanna pay attention to this, is this is how you adjust the animation. Cause there's like a keyframe on every single frame, on every single joint. So like, how do you adjust these keyframes? Like for instance, Let's look at this neck here, all right? His neck is wobbling around. Like, God, you're gonna give yourself a headache, dude. Like, just head's gonna fall off. It's like wobbling, it's goofy, okay? So we need to straighten out his head. So what we do is we just open up the joints here. We find the, I think it's the neck or head joint right here. Yeah, the head joint. And what we can do is go to window F curve. Now, you guys really need to know about F curve. It's F and important. 
So you can click on the one, you can kind of see which one's called in the rotation. You can test it, like you can kind of select these and move them to see like, okay, yeah, that's causing the head to bend like that. So how do we like kind of flatten this out? Cause we can't just manually do one by one, it's too much. So amazing tool that you would never find by yourself, but I was like researching deep in these forums on the internet and stuff, but you can go to edit region tool check that out so we go to the region tool we just select all these until the head kind of bends like that and this region tool is really cool because look you can just stretch it like this you can squash this just that's super cool and you can hold shift if you want to change it without stretching like you know shift and move it around and stuff all right so i just use a simple area light right here you can just do your lighting setup it's not that important because it's just a ghost and then the important thing is i have a camera movement so you have to get this camera movement before you do the smoke simulation. Okay, we're getting to that good part, that smoke simulation. You don't need any X particles, no turbulence FD plugins. You're gonna love this. So I was actually using Octane Renderer for this. You do not need Octane Renderer. Just use the regular After uh, Cinema 4D Renderer. By the way, you guys just thought I was an After Effects guy. You guys didn't know I was a wizard with 3D and all this stuff, did you? But let's go ahead and get started with that smoke simulation. So you have to export this um, as an FBX. The key thing is you have to have your camera movement settled in. So once you get your camera movement right, um, you're ready to export. So we go to File, Export, FBX, just like this. Put this in our folder structure, hit OK. So we are using a tool called Embergen. Now, now we've already showed so many breakthrough tools in this tutorial, but here is another one. We're just showing these one after another. So this is called Embergen. Now what it does is real-time simulations, and this is game changer because I don't know about you, but I've always loved Houdini simulations, like the fire, smoke, all these simulations, are super cool, but the problem with Houdini and all these other ones is you tweak one little setting, then you have to grow a beard waiting for it to simulate it, and you make another adjustment, and then you have to watch paint dry, so it's really difficult, but here you get to have that fun of Houdini, but it's everything is real time, so, so it's just so easy. You did these awesome simulations. The first thing we gotta do is import our scene into Embergen. So let's just delete that shape there, and we can right click and just click import. I'm gonna make this so easy for you guys to understand. So we just have this import node, very simple, and you just choose the file path of the scene that you wanna upload. Here we have the zombie FBX file that we exported from Cinema 4D. And what we can do is hit this refresh button here and look, oh, he's a little tiny. You're not so scary anymore, huh? Your little baby is so cute. Look, he's like little Mufasa. <laughs> Okay, so let's give this guy some smoke and fire. So what we can do is connect the animated geometry to the emitter shape. Boom, look at that, fire. Sorry, buddy, you're still not scary. Okay, so obviously he's way too small. So there's this cool parameter here in the global transform on the import node. You can just do the master scale to 10x like that. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean any of that. <laughs> So already without doing any work, we already have this super cool fire simulation. I bet you guys can imagine all the possibilities you can do with this. Now keep in mind, we could have directly imported this Embergen scene directly from Mixamo. So we could have skipped the Cinema 4D step. The thing is, we just want to do the camera motion in Cinema 4D. But you could also animate a camera here in Embergen. So you could have gone straight from Mixamo to Embergen. This is the future, guys. Everything just happens for you. Such an amazing tool. And I bet you guys might be a little bit intimidated by all these different nodes. But as Visionary Fire, your favorite teacher, and the entire internet, I'm gonna effortlessly download all of the information into your brain about how to use this, okay? So what a good teacher does, separate the signal from the noise. So this is all noise. You don't have to understand all this. The ones I want you to pay attention to are the emitter, the simulation, and the shading. So it's pretty self-explanatory. So the emitter is where it comes from. The simulation is like the physics, and the shading is basically the color. So I'm gonna make this so organized and effortless for you to completely understand this Embergen so you can use it for all your projects. Everyone can tell you're an amateur using that 2D 
particular stock footed bull crap. Okay, so for this effect, I'm not gonna use any fire, but some of you guys might wanna add a little bit of fire to your ghost. I'm gonna show you how to kinda get started with creating some realistic flames. So basically, you just wanna go over here to the shading mainly, cause I told you the shading is kinda like the color. And so you go to the flames here and really you just wanna play with the frame of flames translucency. So this is the first place to get started with realistic flames. So you can play with the translucency level here and then also the flames density min limit. Okay, so this kind of cuts it off so it's not so soft. It's kind of like some hard flames. So you can see it's already looking a lot more realistic and there's a lot of settings you play with, but we're not gonna go much more into fire, but I cover a lot of um, uh, realistic ember gen in the freelance cult. But let's go ahead and get rid of the fire because we're gonna do a super awesome smoke simulation. So we can do that by going to the shading and then we can turn, we can just turn off render flames and leave that off. Okay, so now we just have a smoke simulation. So I'm gonna make this so organized and easy for you to understand how to completely control the look of this smoke, all right? You're gonna be like one of these control freak people in a relationship, but you get to do it because who cares? It's a computer. So I'm gonna sh show you how to completely control the color, the thickness, and the movement of the smoke. So the first section, let's jump right into it. This is gonna be so fun. So the first thing with the color, like I told you, it's the shading node. So there's a couple different things that control the color. First of all, we have this orange stuff. I like that color, puke yellow. Okay, so the reason why that's happening is the scattering. Now the scattering controls like what is lighting the smoke. So is it the sun, is it the the lights, is it the fire? So here you can have the flame contribution. So remember that's the scattering, remember scattering light. So the flame contribution is the, the fl is the light from the fire that goes onto the smoke. So it still thinks the fire is there, so it's, you know, if we just turn this down to zero, then there's gonna be no flame contribution. So we just want a little bit of this, because I do like the ambient light, it kind of uh, adds more detail to the smoke. So I have a little bit of flame contribution here, and then if we change the color of the flames, it's gonna change the color of the flame lighting. So we go over here to the flames and change the color to white. You can see that it gets rid of the puke yellow. Are you happy now? How about dandelion yellow? God, so negative. So the flame contribution and direct lighting contribution. So if you turn this up, it's just gonna be more lighting from the sun that hits the uh, um, smoke. So, and then obviously we can just control the color of the smoke directly with the smoke tab. Boom, boom, boom. Now the, the reason why this is so much more professional is because it's not like this After Effects stock footage where the smoke is like one solid color. We have like real shadows and real 3D stuff in this simulation. So it gets you some more professional clients. So now let's talk about the thickness of the smoke. Okay, thickness. Now by thickness, I know you're thinking the elephant in the room, those thick, sexy thighs, but no, absolutely not. We're talking about thickness of the smoke. In the three main nodes here, the emitter, simulation, and shading, there's one parameter in all of these that controls the th thickness. So there's one here in the emitter, one in the simulation, and one in the shading. So in the one in the emitter is the emission. And so remember, it's emitting smoke. So if you go down here to the smoke rate, so let's go ahead and play here, and we turn up the smoke rate, you can see this smoke's gonna get thicker, aha. So we got something pretty cool going on here. By the way, you can hear my GPU down there going pretty crazy. I have an RTX 3090 GPU, so it's pretty intense. At one point I had a computer worse than you, I can guarantee you that. So yeah, the smoke rate down here um, controls the density of the smoke. There's also another um, parameter in the simulation. So if you go to the combustion, so remember combusting smoke, combustion, we can play with the, is the smoke dissipation. So this makes the smoke life uh, is shorter, so it disappears quicker. So that's the smoke dissipation. So I'm gonna turn that up quite a bit. So combusting smoke, emitting smoke. So in the emitter, it's called the emission to make it thicker and the simulation is called the combustion. And there's another parameter in the shading. So this one's just directly in the smoke. You can turn down the smoke density scale. Okay, so you can make this thinner. All right, so that is how you play with the thickness of the smoke. Now the last part I talked about is the smoke movement. This is a really fun part. So most of your controls are here in the simulation node. So if you go over here to force, you can play with the gravity. So if we, we can turn this even negative, so the smoke is falling. So this has a pretty co cool ghost feel where the smoke is falling like that. 
So that's the gravity. Now the other fun thing to play with is the turbulence. And to my turbulence, your foolishness is inflicting my faculties with so much turbulence. Um, okay, turbulence. So you can turn up the smoke turbulence. This is gonna make it a little bit more active, just like that. Okay, and then you wanna turn up the turbulence size. I like it to about somewhere between five and 10. So pretty cool. And something that functions very similar to the turbulence, the wind. So if you go to the wind chaos right here, this is a create some pretty cool stuff. Check that out. So it has a really cool feel when you turn up the wind chaos. It has a swirly look. I kind of like that, but not too much wind chaos because now it's looking really cool. What an amazing smoke simulation. This is real time. So much better than Trapco Particular and so much simpler than all this Houdini stuff. This is just so game changer, guys. I really hope you guys benefit from this and really helps you with your career and stuff. This is amazing. I think it's pretty cool here is the pressure. Kind of like this one, can create some cool stuff. Suck in or go outwards, it's pretty cool stuff. And then the um, velocity transfer is pretty cool in the emitter, so we're not gonna go into that. Um, really important thing though is like you can see the smoke's getting cut off because of the bounding box, so you can click B, B for bounding box, and you can see that simulation size like this. So in the um, simulation, you just go to simulation size, and then you can turn up the turn up the different values, like the X, uh, X value, and just apply new resolutions to make sure everything fits in there. Okay, look at that, guys. We have our simulation done and done. And we just tweaked so few parameters. I actually do want to play with the sh playing with the shading a little bit here get it kind of dark and you can also go to the emitter visuals and turn off the um, show emitter. Go to the import node, turn off render all if you don't want to see the guy in there. Um, so now we just have the smoke. This smoke is just look at that turbulent luscious smoke. Put a comment right now, just say luscious, put it down right now, help me out with the algorithm. Team luscious. And so I'm ready to render this simulation. The key thing here is you got to go to the import node and go to the cameras and just check your camera here, the camera you had in Cinema 4D. And you gotta plug the camera into the camera node, camera control right here. So then you can go into your camera view just like that and you can see the simulation from your camera view. So now we are ready to render. So I'm gonna show you how to render with a transparent background so you can have this smoke with all the shadows and lighting in your scene. Just check down here alpha, make sure we have render alpha, plug it into the export image. And then the export node, you can just choose a file path wherever you wanna put that. Port flipbook size is right and that's all it takes really. It's so, so simple guys. I, I really hope this tutorial just makes everything easy for you. So you can just start applying this to all of your projects. It's amazing particle simulations. So you can see in the final result, there's this skull inside the demon, which is one of the main parts of the effect. And let me show you how I did this. So in the project file, I'll have the different skull options. You can download the project file um, options. So just go to file, merge, and then choose the uh, skull. So I have this one right here. And you can see what I did was positioned two little spheres inside the eyes. So they just create a new sphere right here. I'll resize the sphere. You can hit the scale button right here and you can click and drag like that to resize. And so the jaw is actually separate as well. So we could even animate this jaw, you know, add a keyframe here. So how do we position this on the model? So you have to find the head joint. So it's like that would be right here. And basically you grab the skull and put it as a child of the head joint. So look at there, it's working. But it seems like we have a more immediate problem. So here we go. So that's just that simple. So that's how you add the skull there. And so you wanna render this as a separate layer. Use these buttons right here to turn off the, the original model, but then you can turn these buttons green to enable the skull. So only the skull is visible. Just like that, you wanna render this a separate layer. And how we made the eyes red is you just, you can double click here and create a little um, red texture just like this. You can even do the luminance so there's no shadows. So just check the luminance, turn this red, and you can apply this to the eyes. So you can have some red eyes. So I'll just show you quickly how you can render in Cinema 4D, make the size, the frame rate, Make sure you choose to render all the frames here and you choose where you want it to save. You want to enable alpha channel so it has a transparent background and also check straight alpha so the edges look good.
and then we have PNG as the file format. And then you're done. So you just click this button and it's gonna render. So the rendering is super simple in Cinema 4D. All right guys, so we're coming on 20 minutes. So I'm gonna stop it here because the rest is just the compositing and After Effects stuff we've done before. But if you really want to see this, request it in the comments and I will do a part two if I get enough requests. And whoever joins my newsletter, I give early access to that part two. Along with all my other free assets, software, and tutorials, I only give to people on my newsletter. I'm building lots of useful stuff for you over at visionaryfire.com, so please visit me there. My name's Lyndon. Until next time, I'll leave you to it.